first problem we did in class, sine of x is a half. Those of you that were there understand that we had to think about this in a unique way, but it wasn't unique at all. There's two approaches. We can think about the unit circle, remember, where in fact sine is a half on the unit circle. We remember that it was here and here, which we remember it happened to be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. This happened to be a different value if we had calculators to use, which we don't. As I said so, we could alternatively graph the function of sine and use that to determine where, in fact, sine is one half. In other words, we could graph one half and find those intersections. We find that the intersection here is pi over 6 and the one here. Is 5 pi over 6. That's what we found. We know this because the unit circle tells us that we have a y value of 1 half at pi over 6 and at 5 pi over 6. So that's just a refresher and a reminder. I'm going to give you two more problems to practice on this. We'll go to trig functions after that. First part, and then work on these two problems. Find when tangent of x is squared of 2 over 2, and cosine of x is squared of 3 over 2. You're welcome. You need to do this problem instead. That other one was a joke. Okay, I try it again. Now, look, I'll give you, I don't know, kind of a hint. Remember tangent is something over something. It's sine over cosine. You're going to have to think about what, rating, what angle would divide each other to end up being the square root of 3. That's a challenge problem, though. I'm not going to really explain that yet. Instead, we'll go over to this cosine. So cosine is square root of 3 over 2 here and here in the first and fourth quadrant. Yeah, you should have been there. Otherwise, you're being lazy about it. All right? That's what it is. Now, what are those angles there? Oh, I'm glad you have your unit circle memorized so that you know. Yes, and the other one is, that's right, 11 pi over 6. Meaning the solutions here are pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. It is, even though it'll become second nature to us, Almost now, but here's your solutions. You can try to figure it out later. One more problem. Find all of the x values such that sine is 1, meaning find all the values where its maximum is achieved, all the angles. And 1, so you can use this equation, which go, this function, which goes on forever and ever, to find when sine is 1, or you can use a unit circle to find a couple iterations. We want to talk about all the instances. Do you have all the instances? Because if not, you better just stop and find them. Figure it out that sine is 1 at not only a half, but also at a negative 3 halves pi. So half pi and 3 halves pi. But well, we're going to talk about all of the variables. So we look. So we know that, okay, so we know that we have a solution at pi over 2. When else does this happen? Well, it happens, let's see, how far is pi over 2 from a negative 3 pi over 2? You should count it. Yeah, well, it's 2, it's two pi. In other words, how often does this happen? Well, it happens every 2 pi. That's right. Meaning I should add 2 pi and then do that thing that we did in class which some of you have already forgotten. How many times this has happened? Infinitely many. How do we represent that? Well, not with rational numbers, not with real numbers, not with irrational numbers, not with whole numbers, because those are defined in all kinds of ways. Not with the natural numbers, which you probably never learned, which is absurd, but rather the set of integers. So we'll say plus 2 pi k, meaning well, what does k mean? We have, to, we have to say what it means, or it means nothing. k is any what? That's right. k is any integer. There is my solution set. Merry Christmas to us all. Watch the inverse function video next, and you'll be all right for class.